made it through the holidays <laughs> with with digital family and friends and we, we can still meet and talk about it so welcome i'm paul i'll be your host tonight and i'm glad to do it um our wednesday nights are designed by reverend jeff to be rich intimate and informal and we do that by um, gathering as a church family in between. Um, shout out to our beloved Richard. He always used to say, good morning, church family. So I'll say, hello, church family. Um, and welcome to our Wednesday night service. Tonight we have um, the wonderful Reverend Sally. She's gonna be our speaker tonight. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about her in a minute. Um, she's kicking off our annual theme, which is also our monthly theme for January, which is Timeless Wisdom, Evolutionary Wisdom. Now, she spoke on Wednesday, so she'll, I mean, Sunday, so she's going to um, recycle some of Sunday and stretch it out to Wednesday for us and revisit some of, of, of her topics. Um, so I, I know we have a special, special night for you. If you're here for the first time, we welcome you. We're glad you're here. Um, like I said, it's informal, intimate, and rich, and we never know what we're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Um, but it's always a nugget of, of truth that you can take home with you and um, carry on with you to get you through the week till the next Sunday. Um, just so you know, you will be muted by our Zoom team, um, and that will improve the quality of transmission. And we have a new feature we're starting tonight after service. Our service runs from 7 to 8, and after service, we're going to have something called the Digital Courtyard. If you're new to and never been to our center, I encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, which I'll tell you about more a little bit later, but we have a a video of what our center looks like. And we have a courtyard in the middle where we gather on Sundays. And that's where we advertise and market ourselves. Our classes are advertised out there, whatever fundraiser we're working on. If anything, we're gathering and greeting and hugging one another and rushing over to the social hall for, for lunch um, that Ruth and the kitchen team has prepared. Um, or we're rushing through the courtyard to get to service. It, it depends on what time and which way we're going. But one of the things we do use that courtyard for is networking and marketing. And in this period that we're in, this digital period, um, we, we haven't done very much of that. So um, tonight we'll be introducing new classes and we will be... Um, using that period as our courtyard, a digital courtyard to talk about the new classes and Reverend Sally and um, Constance will be there. So I wanted to tell you to stay tuned afterwards, after the service to hear all about the classes, just like you would do on a Sunday in the courtyard. Um, so right now it's time to start with our opening prayer. So um, practitioner Eliza Young is here and we're gonna tap on her and ask her to open us up in prayer tonight. Eliza? Okay, great. <sighs> Let's take a breath. Hmm. I know that God is everywhere present. God is all there is. And it is right here where I'm sitting. It's right where you are. It's in the mind of Reverend Sally, and she is divinely guided this evening in her talk. And as we listen, we receive exactly what we need tonight. And it's a magnificent service, everyone bringing their mighty consciousness to unfold here. And all those who wish to be here, we know that they are blessed and they can tune in later. God is timeless. And tonight we hear about timeless wisdom. Hmm. And consciousness and evolution. And so I know that this 
talk this evening is perfect, whole, and complete in the mind of God, and I give thanks for this as I release it to the law, knowing it is so, and so it is. And now, Reverend Sally. Uh, thank you, Eliza. Thank you so much for anchoring us in prayer. <sighs> It's just, it, the feeling is so delicious right now. And I wanna say thank you. So as we go forward into this evening's um, service, first I wanna say, in case you haven't heard it, Happy New Year. <laughs> as Paul said, uh, this is the first Wednesday of the new year, first Wednesday of the month. And so we gotta make sure you've heard that Happy New Year. <laughs> Um, he also communicated that our theme this month is timeless wisdom and evolutionary vision. And what I shared on Sunday um, is that we can, we can find timeless wisdom in our spiritual principles um, outlined in what we believe, our statement of principles. And then we can also find evolutionary vision within our global vision of a world that works for everyone. So these are kind of our standard documents that help us, help guide our way, help give us direction for where we're going in life. And for this evening's satsang session, um, what I'd like to do is begin where we left off on Sunday. So I'm going to kind of give you the synopsis of the talk from Sunday. And then I would like to build on that and eventually open this evening up for discussion so that we can revisit some of these concepts um, as those that are here present this evening, call them forth and we can touch base with them. And, and yes, I'll say right up front, I realize that today, January 6th, there is a lot going on out there in the world. And I'm glad you chose to come here with us and be present for this discussion now, knowing that this discussion is going to help center us. It's going to help allow us to know that we live in a universe that is one that is life affirming, that fully supports us in the highest and the fullest and the best expression of ourselves in this world. So let me share with you a little synopsis of, of my talk from Sunday. This year, we are encouraged to center into that timeless wisdom that science of mind teaches us. We steep ourselves in spiritual practices for the embodiment. And some of these spiritual practices are sacred study, reading, reading sacred scriptures and, and books that speak to this idea of spirituality and consciousness and oneness. And this wisdom comes from all faiths from all cultures, and it allows us to have a broader awareness and care for the greater reality of life. So doing this, we are humbly honoring our ancestry, the ancestry of our teaching by acknowledging that Ernest Holmes, he brought together this synthesis of universal teachings and his purpose, his, his goal in life, when I talked about the game of life, his goal of life was to embody these teachings, to live from these principles. And that's my goal. That's what I'm, I'm opening myself to do, to be. So by centering ourselves in this timeless wisdom, we can open to that evolutionary impulse that is, it's calling us inward, inward to ourselves to recognize, well, hey, what's going on within this meat suit, within this mind where I'm, I am an inlet and an outlet of the universal presence. And so what's going on here? 
it allows me to see this. So as we center in this timeless wisdom, we open to the evolutionary impulse calling us deeper and calling us upward to that greater reality of our individual and our collective evolution of consciousness. And frankly, I think we're seeing that now in, in the political structure and what's going on. We are seeing this evolution of consciousness. So here we are preparing ourselves by cultivating this consciousness of being open to what is that new thing that God is doing in, as, and through us and all beings. And it's, it's interesting as I'm making this statement, I'm hearing um, Barbara Marks Hubbard and her question was, what is the greater good that's being revealed through what's happening now? And that's the question. Somebody capture that in the chat for me, because I think that's the question that I would like to explore a little bit. What is the greater good that is revealing itself now? And in looking at this question, we are called to let go of our, as I said on Sunday, our realistic limitations and to be able to perceive beyond our current perspective to what is real. And on Sunday, I, I mentioned that realistic is, can be defined as Reverend Beckwith says, it can be defined as real like or a pretense. And it's not the, the real that is the Christ consciousness that is beyond. So as we progress into this year, we are recognizing that there are some new thinkers out there. There are spiritual teachers who they know more than we do. They've experienced God in deeper and different ways more profound ways than maybe we have. And we get to open up to the wisdom of our time that helps us to expand on and amplify the teachings of our movement of science of mind in ways that we could never have imagined before. Now, as I'm, as I'm speaking this, um, I'm also recognizing that there's this little little voice behind me saying, yeah, but what about those teachers who are teaching wrong things, bad things, hurtful things? Well, that is not the life affirmative divine plan for anybody. Life is affirmative. Life fully supports itself. And in the chat earlier before service, we spoke to this idea that the universe is never divided against itself. And that's just a spiritual truth. That is timeless wisdom. And that's where <laughs> I'm putting my stake in the ground. That's where I am standing is on that spiritual wisdom. So most of my talk last Sunday was also relative to this idea of transformation and butterflies and that that absolutely wonderful magical um crazy uh beyond belief process of transformation metamorphosis that this butterfly goes through and so i i shared that story of how a butterfly how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly by nori huddle and in that story, it talks about these things called imaginal cells. And these imaginal cells are what allows that caterpillar to liquefy and then become the butterfly, something totally different than, well, maybe not, than what it was to begin with. So these little cells, they actually, as I've discovered through more research, they exist within the caterpillar and they come to full fruition within the butterfly and you know that's something to think about 
And it's something that is so totally in alignment with what we teach in science of mind. What I read from Scientific American is this idea that before hatching, when a caterpillar is still developing inside its egg, it grows an imaginal disc for each of the adult body parts that it will need as a mature butterfly or moth. The discs for its eyes, for its wings, for its little legs, everything. And in some species, what they've discovered is that these imaginal discs, they remain dormant throughout the caterpillar's life. And in other species, the discs begin to take shape of an adult body even before the caterpillar forms its chrysalis or its cocoon. So some of these caterpillars walk around with tiny rudimentary wings tucked inside their bodies, though you would never know it just by looking at them. So the divine design is already present. And that is key. This, this idea, okay, my first prop of the evening, this idea that within this acorn, that entire oak tree that it has the potential to become is already present. Those imaginal cells, I would say, are already present and available within this acorn. I like that idea. I don't know if it's really true, but I like this idea. And I also like this idea for myself that as a spiritual being having a human experience that within me are these imaginal cells that are totally in alignment with the Christ consciousness that I truly am. They may be lying dormant right now and they're revealing themselves. They are evolving through my life as they are for you in your life. So as I said, what we've learned, it's really not so surprising about these imaginal cells, because if we put it in science of mind principles, then oneness, it means that God, the divine presence, infinite possibilities is all there is. There are not two or multiple powers here, right? There's only one life, that life is God, that life is perfect, that life is my life now. So in all of this that we're talking about, we're talking about that one life in multiple forms of expression and the imaginal cells, as well as the caterpillar regular old cells, they're all part of that one life. So our job in this process of evolving is to clear the way. We're here to clear the way for a greater expression of the good that already exists. And I think this comes from the discussion earlier this evening. And I, I wanna say it was Paul who was sharing that Reverend Jeff says this all the time. That's what our job is. We are here to clear the way for the greater expression of good that already is. And, you know, we can actually rest assured in this process because the integrity of the universe it's already guaranteed. Science of Mind textbook, page 453.2, I believe that's the reference we were given earlier. We're not gonna violate that integrity of the universe. So we can rest assured that God is all there is. God's never divided against itself. There is one life. And I am part of it, as are each of you. And so, okay, so where does this leave us? 
this leaves us with this idea that I'd like to kind of explore too of, of spiral evolution. When I think of evolution, I tend to think of this idea of a spiral. And I may start out on the lower levels of the spiral, maybe really tight and not too exposed to too much going on. And, and as I grow and do my sacred study and, and just go within and I be still and know God, then my spiral tends to expand. Um, and I see things differently and I do things differently and I feel things differently than I did when I was in this tight little spiral to begin with. I'm learning and I'm, I'm growing. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to show you an example with my crochet of where I have revisited something and I can, I can show you a, a physical example of where I've learned and I've grown. So a couple of years ago, I found a pattern that I just loved. It was a shawl pattern. And I got the thread, I got the yarn that was specific to that pattern and spent the money to do it because it's not something I normally do. But it's it's a linen and it's a mohair yarn and so i followed the pattern and this this shawl though it's beautiful now and i i love the way it looks now you can see that there are many folds in this shawl that there are more stitches here frankly than there should have been when i read the pattern i understood and i believed that the stitches should go a certain way and that I should increase the stitches by so many as I went along and I ended up increasing way too many stitches. So there's a lot of folds in this particular shawl that shouldn't be there. So recently I've gone back to, to look at this pattern again and I started doing it again. And what I'm recognizing is that this, this pattern is really a beautiful flat pattern and that it was only because I misunderstood or I misread the pattern. I didn't know enough about how that pattern was supposed to work when I looked at it the first time. But because I have evolved in my understanding and developed the ability to step back and look at it again in a new way, have I been able to now do the pattern that um, will look more like what it should look like. And I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. So it's, this is an example of how our spiritual life can flow sometimes. We come in, we study the information in various books, and we internalize it. We take it within, and yet we're a little off on our understanding of what's written. And so when we come back, we spiral back around and we read that information again. Or, for example, when I took foundations for the first time, that class, I had this kind of an understanding that was very limited about science of mind principles. And when I've revisited that, that foundations class or the beyond limits class, my perspective was so much larger and my understanding was so much deeper than it was that first time that I've evolved. I can see where I'm spiritually evolving. And I would guess that many of you who have taken classes have experienced the same thing. So I think what I'd like to do is, is leave us with the readings for today and open the conversation up to this idea of what timeless wisdom is serving you and 
Let me see if I can see in the chat. We'll see the other question. What greater good is it that's revealing itself now through us? So our readings for today that I'll, I'll end this portion of the talk with is there is a power for good, a power within us greater than any condition we can ever contact. It knows no obstruction, no obstacle. It transcends all because it is the final fact of creation, the almighty indwelling our own souls. And that was from Ernest Holmes. And then from Ephesians, from the Bible, chapter 3, verse 20, there is a power at work within us that is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. <sighs> that feels so good. Yeah, that feels good. So let's, let's open it up to our questions and I'll watch in the participants window and I'll also um, look at the gallery to see if I can see anybody raising their hands. And I'll look at the chat here. Reverend Tony, I see your video on. What you got to say for us? <laughs> Wait, you're on mute. I have to unmute myself. So the question, uh, again, what timeless wisdom is serving you and what greater good it's revealing itself through um, us. What I've learned over my years, and I always talk about being uh, in recovery uh, for Jehovah Witness, um, and, um, I think the lesson over the years is not to, um, be angry, um, of the process or the dogma of that, uh, religion, uh, but take the things that I knew that I know that I knew, uh, that God was always with me. Um, and that is that wisdom that doesn't change no matter what religion or philosophy or whatever you study going forward. Um, I always knew there was something, something there that uh, I always called it the little, the little voice. Um, but that little voice has never uh, led me uh, astray and it's always been with me. So that is that timeless wisdom. And right now I'm feeling that same goodness, uh, uh, especially going into 2021. So I, uh, I, you know, suggest for everybody find that timeless wisdom, no matter where you got it, or everybody has it, and this is where you connect with it. That will never leave you, especially as we um, shelter in grace, you know. And you're talking to your cat like I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are he, he's God, and I'm God. Uh, but what makes me feel the best? and the most secure and excited about 2021 is that wisdom and that God that has always been with me. Fabulous. Thank you, Reverend mm. Tony. Sherry, I see your hand up. Hi. Yeah, um, I have a spasm in my neck. That's why I'm holding my neck. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. Okay, so I'm not, maybe not gonna stay the whole time because it's been real pain. Mm. Um, but it came from what was going on today and my response to it. So I started at three in the morning this morning, um, waking up and texting and watching the Georgia um, election and doing this in my bed and, and uh, fell asleep again for a couple hours. I wanna speak to what's the greater good revealing itself now, that question, mm -hmm. because um, all morning I was addicted to the news. And I was in horror and I was watching it all unfold. And I could feel my neck doing what it did. And um, finally, I decided that um, I had absolutely no control over any of this. And so all I could do was put God, um, my prayer in the middle of it and leave it alone. And, and I left it where the woman was being shot 
in the capital. And I went out for the afternoon in the sun and spent time with my dog and bought wonderful food and took a nap <laughs> and meditated. And when I came back right before this, I looked at the news again and sure enough, it was resolving itself. I, it's still in the middle of it, but we have a long way to go. But but um, they were back counting the votes. Um, the awakening of consciousness was happening of the, the congressman furious and calling out the president for this. And, and I'm thinking it took this perhaps to wake up a whole bunch of people in a system. And I don't know where it's going. Um, like we say, I, it's rough waters, but I had this feeling of peace that I just took my hands off of it and all of my little in my head, you know, and left, left it and blessed it and came back and quick, quickly tonight, they're counting the electoral votes. <laughs> so um, I think it's for me, it's uh, the perfect day to have this, this question. Uh, what is the greater good that's revealing itself now? There's a lot of it going on right now as yeah. we struggle to a higher consciousness in our society. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for speaking into that and, and bringing it to the table this evening, because there is, there is a greater good revealing itself through all of this. And we're called to do our treatment. We're called to do our treatment, release it, let it go, pay attention to what calls us from our heart, which is what you did, let it go, take a nap, whatever. Yeah. Back to nature. Back to nature. That's right. Reverend Jerry, I see you there. Well, I have a couple of things. I'll first start with where Sherry left off in that what I absolutely know to be the truth, and I was not plugged into the news all day, but I did try my best to catch up when I returned home because I was hearing bits and pieces. But what became very clear to me is the truth always reveals itself in whatever chaos is yeah. happening and taking place. So that came up for me, just knowing the truth. The truth is revealing itself. Congress is back to business and they're moving through this chaotic situation in a very profound way. So, and just holding the high watch and, and prayers for all that uh, is taking place. The other thing is, and Reverend Sally, thank you for the lovely teaching tonight. And I want to, um, I want to talk about the shawl. I want to talk about your beautiful example of, um, uh, how you were actually being guided to create this shawl that wasn't exactly the pattern, but yet it's beautiful. It's beautiful with its folds. And that, you know, there's always divine grace in everything that we do, whether it turns out the way we think it should or not, because it's all God. And so therefore there are no mistakes in spirit. There are only lessons to be learned. And so that's what I it became very clear for me with your share. So thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <You're> welcome. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else that like would like to speak into this discussion this evening? I see Gabriella's hand up and then Maureen. Sorry. Um, the first time with wisdom that I will share is something that Reverend Jeff said years ago, and I don't know if it came directly from him, but he said, um, the news is a reason to pray or something like that. And whenever I'm upset about what I'm learning on the news, um, prayer always makes me feel better and, and reaffirming the vision that I want to stand for in the world. So that really helped me today. And, um, and I will say, um, I had this, I think maybe I got this from, from Reverend Jerry, but I'm not sure it's a prayer for world peace from Ernest Holmes. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that was great this morning, uh, this morning, and I think I might do it again tomorrow. That's a great one. Yes. Um, yeah. And, um, another time, timeless wisdom piece I'm learning lately is to articulate your feelings. And, um, and even if you're alone, sometimes you can just say out loud, I'm upset, you know, um, giving it words. I'm with kids right now and I'm trying to teach them that. 
And then I'm watching this show on TV, Frankie and Grace, which is, they're, you know, older than me. And they're kind of learning that lesson just to, art, just to um, give words to um, your feelings helps you get on the other side. So that's another um, piece I'm working with. And um, your stall story um, reminded me of something I learned with kids recently about making mistakes in artwork and being okay with it. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I had to learn, I think my mom teach me how to like turn it into something else or, you know, or cover it up or cover it up and then turn it into something else, you know, but um, I was around this, I was homeschooling this little girl who was like, boy, she made a mistake on her art piece. It was like, you know, it was, it was a bad scene, very emotional. I mean, to the point of tantrums. So I was trying to like teach her, you know, like turn it around or, you know, come back to it in, you know, in an hour or um, maybe turn it into something else. But, um, and I didn't realize that's such an important lesson to learn when you're a kid to like mm -hmm. yes. leave, leave and come back and look at it differently. And um, that was a hard one to teach. I don't, I don't know. I think she's still learning that, but your, your story just reminded me of how I was learning it again by watching her. Um, so yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you, Gabriella. Thank you. We all have so much to learn throughout this life experience. Uh, Maureen, and then Constance. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm so dark. I'm <laughs> out walking the fur babies. But um, the timeless wisdom and the thing that I'm, I, I can't remember the other one, but it's like bringing forth or something uh -huh. is uh, pretty much the same thing that I'm going to share is that not everybody is the same. Yes. Not everybody. So I mean, I mean, the meat suits, right? The human beings that are expressing themselves as spirit, not all of them are uh, where we are in our consciousness. And um, I learned that I was not very, uh, I have not known what's really happened, uh, on the news, but I know a little bit about what's, what happened and, but what, where I'm coming with this is from my family, because I was recently hurt very deeply by my family members over the holidays, of course. Right. And I look up to those people that insulted me and it just made me realize that none of us really kind of know you know we're doing we're all just doing our best mm -hmm. and I mean the best isn't the best for everybody but you know what I'm saying like it's we're all even those people doing horrible things you know violent things or whatever it's we're all one mm -hmm. and we're all different mm -hmm. and no one has the golden key to the crapper. Like we, we don't know everything and that's okay. Yeah. So that was where, what I'm coming up with now. Yeah. Thank you for that, Maureen. It, it reminds me of, um, I think it's a Karen Drucker song. I'm not sure if it's a Karen Drucker song, but it's, we're all angels that only have one wing and we're all here to help each other through this process called life. And yes, to your point, we are doing the best we can with the knowledge that we have. Here's our little tiny spiral. And if we're in this little tiny piece of the spiral, we will expand our knowledge and our consciousness and our understanding. And in this plane, it takes time. There is no time in spirit, but it takes time on this plane. And we are here to love and serve and honor each other in this process. Constance. Well, I wanted to go back to your, um, uh, the, the quote mistake with your, um, with your shawl, because recently I was doing some painting and I was painting a, uh, a piece that was in a round about eight inches around. And uh, I thought I had it done and I decided I wanted to put a border around it. And so I put a border around it in a darker color. And when I looked at it, I realized, because what it did, 
was it gave me information about myself because I felt like I had, I was being hemmed in. And I realized that I did not want, that I, I needed to have that piece express a lot of openness, a lot of movement, and that, that what I had done was actually to constrain it. And so, um, so that was really important information for me to learn about where I was at. That's the first thing. And then, and then of course, it was like, okay, so what do I do with it? Well, I could either cut it out uh, or I could paint it out. And um, it was on a piece of um, quite heavy water paper color. And so I knew that cutting it would be very difficult. So I decided to paint it out. And uh, the painting it out gave me an incredible amount of pleasure because it gave me more painting to do, which I love to do, uh, just the very process of it. Um, and so I ended up with something with a, a piece that expressed what I wanted to express in a way that was very different than what I thought I was going to be express how I was going to be expressing it. And it, it was just perfect. So again, that was another example of, of uh, learning from the from what I considered to be a mistake. It taught me something about myself. Yeah. And then about what to do about it. So yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. It's it is amazing how much we can learn from our mistakes, right? And and I don't know, maybe the fact that we have these conscious minds that can logically and realistically um, think helps us to see some of these mistakes in ways that we might not otherwise see. It's, it's like when you, when you take the light and you focus it through the prism, it separates the, the light streams so that then you can see the wavelengths of the yellow and the red and the, and the blue and the green. But before that, this allness of the light was was white was was undifferentiated the oneness and yet when it comes through that prism that's where the light rays are differentiated and we as as spiritual beings having a human experience we are these differentiated light waves and we are here revealing the goodness of God as our lives. And sometimes we may look at our lives and say, wow, that was a mistake. And yet back of it, there's that light, the allness of light, the presence of God. All right. Anyone else? I, I can see that we've got about five minutes left for this discussion. Let me put it back on gallery view for myself so I can see if anybody else is, is twitching over there so I can call on them. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing any movement on my screen. So I think what I would like to do is welcome Paul in to, um, actually, I do you want me to close this out in prayer first, Paul, or do you want to go to the announcement? Uh, let's 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 get all the business taken care of. The first thing is, thank you, Sally. You You're picked welcome. a heck of a night to speak, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I got my team backing me up here. <laughs> I think collectively, we're all breathing a sigh of relief. That's my kind of momentary thank god for wednesday night thing is just taking a minute just to breathe and the evolution sometime reverend joan used to say this like when a rocket goes up into the air and breaks through the the orbit mm -hmm. it shudders and it shakes and beams and it's it's tough and then it emerges into the next layer and it's it just cruises in outer space. Yeah. And I think we had a shuddering moment today. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, the other thing that it is shuddering to me is 
I disagree with you, Reverend Sally. I think the first shawl is better than the second shawl. <laughs> <laughs> I love the flounce on it. It's like a bolero with a, you know, a is, really cool right. back. <laughs> so I think you should just make the new pattern <laughs> the old pattern, you know, <laughs> and embrace your error <laughs> and forgive <laughs> yourself for creating a beautiful show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no one knows it was a mistake. Oh, I, exactly, Sally. I think it's pretty. It's you know what a swing coat is. To, I know Tony yes. what a swing coat is, but it's where the back material is fuller than the front material. Yes, so yes, swings. yes. That's what I thought of when I saw that. And I thought <laughs> she created something really more beautiful than the original intention. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I say, keep it in your repertoire. I like it. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's your fashion tip for the day. <laughs> so with that in mind, thank you. Let's everybody thank Reverend Sally for having a good sense of humor on a real tough day. Thanks for getting yeah. up there. Thank you. And in our shuddering and shaking of Wednesday night, we move into the graceful parts. And the graceful part for me is our announcement. So I'm gonna scoot over to those real quick on my notes here and ask Peter to play along with me. Thank God for our Zoom team. I'll, I'll save that mm -hmm. for later. Anyways, um, please join us on the second Sunday of 2021, January 10th when our own Reverend Tony Bradford, who's here in the present with us, yay, is continuing the new year with a talk on grounding in God. Our meditation is at 10 and our service starts at 10.30. And then next Wednesday, January 13th, practitioner Elena Hutchinson picks up on the theme of grounding from the beginning in an interactive satsang service. Our meditation is at 6.30 and our service is at seven. Now, last week I teased you a little bit about the winter classes. Actually, the tease was thrown out on that hook from Constance. She goes, tease them, Paul. And I says, I'm real good at doing a tease. So um, now we can do the revelation of that tease. We're announcing the unveiling of the certified six week life visioning class, See With Your Heart, starting Tuesday, January 19th. And this will be taught by practitioner Constance Chapman and Reverend Sally Bartholomew. Visioning and vision boarding are siblings with the different strengths and practices. Working with vision boards is a great optional first step to opening even more to spirit's call for your life. And visioning, the next step, can become a lifelong spiritual practice. If you want 2021 to be the year you listen with your heart, increase your trust in your intuition, have fun, and do some good work, sign up now. Early bird pricing of 198 is good for one week. Um, registration is on the events page and the upcoming classes and workshops page of our website. Constance and Reverend Sally will stay after the service in our new virtual courtyard or digital courtyard that we talked about earlier in the program to talk about the class. And that's where we will replicate our physical courtyard in the virtual or in the digital for about 15 minutes after the service tonight. So make pretend you're walking through the courtyard and you see Constance and Reverend Sally sitting at a little table and they're all excited to sign you up and talk to you about their upcoming class. That's exactly what we're gonna replicate at the end of the program tonight. Did you know that Centers for Spiritual Living, our home office, sponsors wonderful events. Coming up in February is the VISTA conference, three days virtually packed with wonderful speakers and musicians. Go to the csl.org website to learn more. And that's what Peter is showing us right now. And you'll notice there's a red arrow. While you're there, sign up for that newsletter. Their newsletter has lots of great events in it. So you can check out their events and sign up and get your own version, the CSL's version 
of our village news. <clears throat> if you're a voting member of Oakland Center and would like to serve your village, consider applying to be on the board of trustees. For more information, contact Deborah Jackson and you can download an application from the homepage of the website. The application details a lot of what you may want to be um, knowing about as serving on the board of trustees. Every January, the Association of Global New Thought sponsors a season for nonviolence. Use this season to bring your understanding of peace to a new level of spiritual maturity and celebrate the 64 days between the memorial anniversaries of Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. Go to the events page of our website and check out all the different ways you can participate. And with that in mind, I wanna take a moment to um, not only thank you for attending, but um, take up an offering, a digital offering. I hold our digital offering plate out in front of you. And I'm, I ask that you re recite with me our offering statement. This is a new year and a new start. This gift I give is God in action. It does good work in the world and blesses creation. So as you take your gift and hold it close to your heart, we bless it and we release it. And how do we release it? We go to the webpage where everything else is. And we look for that donate button right up there, which will prompt you through the process to use your credit card. And again, that's at www.oaklandcsl.org. Or you can do it the new and even more hipper way, the millennial way, text an amount to 510-327-3431. Or if you'd like, you can write a check and send it to the church. The address is on the home page. But whether you donate tonight or donate in the future, that's the way to do it. We know and we're grateful for all the contributions that we receive, whether it's time, treasure, or talent. So if you're looking for a way to serve, we've got ways to do that. If you're looking for a way to give, we have ways to do that. And if you're looking for a way to just be in community, you can stay connected with us through the webpage to do that. Um, because that is the center of the universe in this digital age. So oaklandcsl.org, can't say it enough. There's all kinds of stuff there. Also, there's a hot link to our village Facebook group so you can connect with other villagers that do Facebook. And there's also a hot link that will lead you to our YouTube channel. I said earlier, if you've joined us for the first time, you can go to our YouTube channel and we have an eight minute video of the entire property from our recent renovation. And you'll get to see the physical courtyard um, that we're gonna duplicate tonight. Um, as well, if you're not receiving our weekly newsletter, The Village News, you can do that on the homepage, go to the bottom left-hand corner and hit the, um, place where it asks you to submit your email address and you press it and it goes to Constance and she'll put you on the email list. The Village News has everything that's coming up in the next week um, and other additional information. It's a nice reminder um, of what's coming up. So lots of ways to stay connected in the shelter and grace period as we continue with that. Um, we're optimistic with all the changes on the vaccine. I, I read today, um, Kaiser may be getting a larger supply than expected. So yay, uh, many of us in the, in the Alameda County area may be blessed a little early. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Whatever it takes for us to get back behind this wall, um, I'm all for it. Um, I'm also all for our Zoom team. Without them, we can't do anything. We can't meet, we can't greet, we can't play together. So I really wanna take a minute and thank Peggy and Peter and Alice Herndon and Alice, Alice Knudsen and our newest and best friend, Barbara um, is out there um, handling um, all kinds of things for us, new for her and, and good for us. Um, also without question, our own Constance Chapman runs the show. So thank you, Constance, for all that you do. Again, we're going to end a few minutes early, um, I think. I want to thank everybody again. And I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Sally to close us out in prayer.
I would love to do that, Paul. And thank you. Thank you for all those announcements. We have a lot going on. Oh. <laughs> and it is marvelous. We may not be there physically, but we are active. <laughs> And we are grateful that everyone joins us in, in this activity. So now I invite us to just simply go within. Let's take a few breaths together at your own pace. As we center within, allowing our focus to turn within that heart space, like in that picture of the, the little girl hand on heart, focusing in that central place, that center with no circumference, that place where the universe, the infinite potential, the divine pattern, <coughs> energy, the atmosphere, all, all is centered within that one space the center with no circumference. And what I'm recognizing is that God is. And if that word doesn't resonate with you, put in a word that does. Divine spirit, father, mother, God, love, beauty, nature, the universe, the one mind. It is. It is all there is. It is my life. I am an expression of it. As is each and every beloved here on this call, those that watch this later on, everyone in the planet. For God is all there is. And God is revealing itself in, through, and as each. And I am so grateful to know that there is a greater good revealing itself in, through, and as everyone. That each of us has those imaginal cells within us, that divine pattern and design. And it is good and very good. And so I give thanks for this evening's discussion. I give thanks for this community that lifts us up. I give thanks. And as I do so, I release this word to the law, knowing that spirit's got it. I can take my hands off. I can rest assured, allowing it to be so. I invite us together to say, and so it is. And so it is.